Hello computer science students. Welcome in. Um, this is going to be a video dis demonstrating the, the app we're creating for our final exam. Um, you'll see that actually creating these windows and actually making an interactive display is not that difficult as it turns out in Java. Um, and so we'll, we'll be able to actually make a truly interactive app. Um, so part of the concept as we walk through this, by the way, is that the things printed to the console, and this is really how things work, everything that you do with print statements that we printed to the console um, is really what other programmers see, but your program itself is more likely to be just an app. Um, and so you're going to have pop-up windows, and that's really going to be what the user sees. Um, and so we're going to have debug information in our console here, but actual user information is listed here. So the first thing that we do is you're going to create a pop-up that reads in a file name. Now there's a couple scenarios for this. Um, a couple potential situations we need to handle. Um, let's start with a really easy example. Um, and let's say that we type um, to candidates.txt, which is a file you're provided, and we tap OK. All right, so once you have the fully working project, which by the way will take a few steps here, um, you're going to end up with uh, a few printouts. The first thing is you're going to make sure you can read in what the user typed to candidates.txt. Um, you're going to turn that into a file name. Assuming it's a good file, you'll open it, read in the file contents, and then you're going to create it, turn it into a list, and pass it to another method that will hopefully reiterate the file contents as a list. Um, and so once that's done, you'll be able to, to add buttons to a little printout here, or to a, sorry, to a window here. Um, and so now that we have this, this is uh, basically an election simulator. So every vote that's cast, you would click the button for the person. So here, David Perdue got a vote since I clicked the button. Um, we would record what button was clicked we would list the current votes. So we have David Perdue at one, John Ossoff at zero, and if we click John Ossoff, now they both have one vote. So we're gonna track all the votes that our candidates get. Um, we could run through a few examples here. Let's say that David Perdue ends up with four and John Ossoff with three. We can click our tabulate results button, which by the way will be included on all of our printouts here, or all of our button, all of our displays, all of our, our it's added as a button no matter whatever scenario we're in so that we can calculate who wins. So when tabulate results is clicked, we're gonna calculate who won. Um, so in this case, we calculate that David Perdue is the winner. And importantly, winners must receive over 50% of the vote. This will be more important, especially when we talk about runoffs. Um, so this will allow us to check for winners um, and we can, we can record the winner of the election. Um, the way the code is structured is that you can continue to vote if you want at this point. Um, Let's say John Ossoff got a couple more votes. We could calculate that John Ossoff was the winner. So we're going to report the percentage of votes each candidate earned, the total number of votes, or the, the votes they earned out of the total, um, and then the percentages, of course. Um, and in fact, we're even going to handle a, tr a tie. And by handle, I mean, say, I don't know. Um, this isn't likely, this is almost astronomical, oh, ex extraordinarily unlikely to happen. Um, and so I, have, I honestly, personally, have no idea what actually happens in a true draw. And I can't imagine this scenario would ever happen. Um, so for our case, we're just going to print that it was a draw. David Perdue had 50%, John Ossoff had 50%, and we'll just say it was a draw, and we're done. Um, so this is the basic usage of our app. I'm going to now run into a couple more scenarios um, to show you even, even some more situations where the app might run a little differently. So feel free to only jump back in and look at these scenarios I'm about to run when you get to that part of the lab or of the project. So let's run it again. Um, oh, and by the, actually, sorry, I should also mention here, um, if you click cancel, what will happen is that the window will return null meaning that nothing was clicked. So we're gonna have an if statement in there to handle that and say that, well, if null is found, we're going to say that our file name is .isaacrobby. And so that's our three candidate example. Um, again, I can do a really quick example. Let's say dot gets three votes and neither of the other candidates get any. We could still declare dot the winner since she had over 50% of the votes. Um, let's run one more time. Let's say that the user enters nothing and hits OK. In this case, again, we're assuming that if you type nothing that we're going to go to a default file. So this is another conditional. Um, and if that happens, we're again going to use .isaacrobby. 
And so this will be a really good way for me to dive in and talk about um, how runoffs work. <clears throat> so this is kind of the tricky part. So let's say we have more than two candidates. What happens if each candidate were, for example, to get one vote? Or maybe let's even do a different scenario here. Let's do, um, here we go, two for Dot, three for Isaac, four for Robbie. So it seems pretty clear here that Robbie might need to be or might might could be reported as the winner since he had the most votes um, but the way runoffs work is that they say in order to win you need over 50 percent of the votes well here we have nine votes to be over 50 percent you'd have to have five so robbie only has four um, and so he doesn't actually have a majority and so this is actually an election system that's used in georgia um, for their senate results and so we're actually going to have two runoff elections or likely to have two runoff elections almost certainly um, for the Senate in January, so it's actually going to follow the same situation. Um, and so when we tabulate the results here, we're going to report, and this is the last step of your project is handling this scenario, um, we're going to find that we have to have a runoff. So nobody had a majority of votes. And so when you have a runoff, you take the top two candidates, the two candidates with the most votes, eliminate everyone else, and have another vote. So if we click OK here, we'll see that our button clicker updates to remove dot and have only our two finalists. We would then start fresh. So Isaac Asimov and Robbie Anderson would both start with zero votes. Um, we could then have a true 1v1 election here, just like the first examples we ran. So a draw, a winner, uh, a draw or a winner. That's all that can happen. So, um, so that's it, right? So this is this is it. The runoff happens. We have we can simulate that by running a whole new fresh set of votes, and as soon as we tabulate the results from that election, we have a winner. So um, that's the general idea. I'm going to run one more example for us. Um, in this example, I'm going to open our third file, which is Ghostbusters. Uh, I wanted a four candidate election. I figured the Ghostbusters are four good candidates to choose here. Um, so we're going to open the, the Ghostbusters file. We're going to have Egon, Peter, Ray, and Winston. And so I'm going to cook up, cook up a little scenario here. Let's say every candidate had one vote. How do we handle this? Um, well, clearly we're going to a runoff. No one has over 50%. Um, and honestly, I have no idea how this would be handled in the real world. It's extraordinarily unlikely to happen that you wouldn't have a most and second most. Um, and so the way I decided to handle it was just alphabetically. So Egon and Peter would be our final two candidates here. And we would reset with Egon versus Peter. Um, so this is just one more scenario you might run into as you work through these examples. So by the end of this, we have a nice voting simulator for both um, two candidate elections where a majority wins and then also a runoff scenario. Um, so if you have any questions, please let me know. Hopefully you found this video informative, um, and I will talk to you guys next time.